Welcome to the Muslim Life Hackers Podcast, the weekly podcast providing you with tips and tricks on how to hack your life and maximize its potential. And now for your hosts, Mifra Maroof and Maheen Malik. As we sail across the sea of life, so much. Assalamualaikum, Muslim Life Hackers. Welcome to episode 36 of the podcast. And today, we've got a special guest interview lined up for you. Mifra is going to be interviewing Sheikh Musay Khan on the topic of the 10 days of Dual Hijab. Sheikh Musay was actually born in Saudi Arabia and is currently serving as one of North America's youngest imams at the renowned Sakina Community Centre, Toronto, Canada. He's also a host of Ask Musle, which is a never-ending online video series on YouTube devoted to answering Islam's most frequently asked questions in a practical and simplified manner. After studying at Medina University, Sheikh Musa returned to Canada and joined the speaker circuit, lecturing and teaching throughout the globe in addition to appearing on various worldwide network. He's most well known for his unique analysis of Quranic texts along with his wisdom in simplifying some of Islam's most complicated matters. Sheikh Musa is going to be talking to us about the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, what's it all about, um, he's going to be giving us the download and along with what makes these 10 days special and what kind of acts we can implement going into these 10 days. So with that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Mifra. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Musle. Thank you for joining us today. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. It's my pleasure. So how's your day going so far? So far, so good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How about all of you? Alhamdulillah. It hasn't started yet since it's actually quite early in the morning here in Australia. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. We know that the, like, there are some special days that are coming ahead of us soon, the days of Dhul Hijjah. So would you be able to tell us a bit about it and explain to us what makes them special? Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. So the days of Dhul Hijjah, as a matter of fact, these are actually some of my favorite days of the year. And there are a number of reasons why. This is an opportunity for all the Muslims and all the believers around the world, inshallah, that uh, they have a chance to really, really increase their deeds, maximize the time that they have, especially those who are not able to go for Hajj, and really maximize the times that they have with themselves and with their family, just to build a closer and stronger relationship with their creator. Mm. So these days of Dhul Hijjah are days that everybody should really look forward to, inshallah. When we, we actually look at the days of Dhul Hijjah, like the 10 days, like mm-hmm. how, are, how are these days in comparison to say like the last 10 days of Ramadan? Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala valued these days so much so that he actually made an oath by them in the Quran. And as we all know, if Allah makes an oath by something, then there's definitely like a profound value uh, that's attached to this particular thing. So in the first two verses of Surah Al-Fajr, Allah Azza wa Jal said, Wal-Fajr wa layalin ashr, by the dawn and by the ten nights. Many of the scholars of Tafsir, including Ibn Kathir, Ibn Abbas and others, they said that this verse here, the ten nights Allah is referring to is Dhul Hijjah. So the deeds that are performed during these 10 nights are the most rewarded more than any other time of the year. And even one hadith that comes to mind is that the Prophet ﷺ said that there are no days during which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than these 10 days. And even the companions, they... they mention other um, righteous deeds such as like jihad fi sabidillah and and being good to parents and so on and they said ya rasulullah not even these things come before these 10 days and he said to them not even those so these 10 days host a, a whole plethora of special things that we can do to gain the blessings from allah azza wa jal Wow, that's no. awesome. So mm-hmm. what what exactly are some things that we can do during these days then? Okay, so really what we can do inshallah um, to, to really, really understand the blessings of these days, there are two things that every Muslim should really keep in mind. So for those Muslims who are able to perform Hajj, because that's also happening during these, uh, during these days as well, yeah. those who are performing Hajj, 
they inshallah ta'ala will have the opportunity to literally flow right through all the opportunities of doing righteous deeds but this is especially for those who are not able to do that so in terms of some of the things that we can do inshallah is uh, the first thing is that we want to fast as much as we can now fasting on the day of arafah itself will equal to um, to the blessings of expiating the sins of at least two years, the previous year and the coming year ahead. And this is based on an authentic hadith narrated in Sahih Muslim. Hmm. Um, on the day of Arafah itself, this is the day that Allah also perfected his religion. So it's also a profound day for us to make a lot of dua, recite a lot of Quran and so on. Hmm. It's also a day that most of the pilgrims, they Allah will descend and bestow his mercy on those people pilgrims specifically so those are the people who are actually there and they're enjoying their hajj as for maybe a lot of mo- the mo- most of us who aren't uh, don't have that opportunity what we could do is the following things we want to basically set ha- have a mindset of increasing our worship during the during the days and during the night yeah we want to try to achieve reciting the entire quran as well we also want to make sure that we constantly keep our tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah. We want to maintain a state of tahara, meaning you, you want to really try to be in wudu as much as possible. Even if you're not praying, you're not going to read Quran, you're not going to do anything. You just yeah. want to be in a state of wudu. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I guess I'll mention two more things that are really, really important. And, and the reason why I say that is just because these are really, really easy to implement, inshallah. And that is um, uh, you want to also wake up for all of your uh, Fajr prayer and you want to pray all the rest of the prayers on time. You want to make sure that you're really disciplined in those areas. And the second and last thing that I want to mention from many, many things that we can do is try to give charity. Charity yeah. is crucial in these 10 days. It is absolutely crucial. And charity doesn't necessarily mean you actually have to give money or share some of the wealth. It's not restricted to just that. So Smiling, what, being okay. kind to each other and yeah. so on. No. Okay, so what other, um, like with charity, it's not only limited to money. So what, what are the other things that um, a person can do? Like they're smiling, but is there in, in anything else that they can do? Absolutely. I mean, smiling, showing kindness to one another. One of the things that Allah mentions in the Quran is in verse number 177 in Surah Al-Baqarah. This is the verse that teaches every one of us how to be a good Muslim. And one of the things that Allah really emphasizes, a huge chunk of the verse is really devoted to just charity. So Allah says that you be kind to your neighbors, you be kind to your family, you be kind to the community, you help and you assist those who are struggling in whatever way they're struggling that you're able to assist in. So smiling, shaking hands, building a relationship, just salam alaikum, how are you doing? Where are you from? Just trying to build a relationship is key. That mm. doesn't cost anything except just a little bit of effort, inshallah. So what about the person that they they feel that like during these days are coming and like they feel that they've like made like a large amount of sins and they feel a bit hopeless um what what would you say to a person like that really and truly i mean this is a good question what i would say to someone like that is these days that are coming are the days especially for them don't lose sight of them don't let them just you know breeze by just over their head really really try to take advantage of them and the key is to do as much good deeds as possible to the best of their ability, inshallah. Allah Allah's forgiveness is emphasized in these days. So you really want to take advantage of that by praying your sunnah prayers, making sure that you're disciplined in the five daily prayers. Yeah. Try to make dua, tasbih, remembrance, Quran, as much as you can. All those simple, simple little things that they've done, these are the things that are going to start to build hope in their heart, hope in their life, that inshallah, Allah will forgive them and they can move, move forward in a very, very positive way. Mm. A person like going forward, forward with like during the days of Dhul Hijjah, like should should they be focusing on really big deeds or just trying to like get um, get into a habit of deeds so that after Dhul Hijjah they can be able to continue those deeds? You know, That's a good question. You know, interestingly enough, with the last ten nights, uh, sorry, the the ten days of Dhul Hijjah, it's actually both. Oh yeah. If you are able to perform some 
ex- some extra deeds that require a little bit of effort from you, you should try to do it. Otherwise, the standard notion for all of us is we start off with the things that are simple that we're able to begin with and keep consistent in our lives, and then we build from that. But with the last 10, with these 10 days, it's very, very unique. It's very, very special. The Prophet has preferred it over any other days of the year. Yeah. So you really, really want to put that extra effort and that extra push to try to perform those bigger deeds that might be difficult for you. Okay. So like if you were to comment on one, like if it was quality or quantity, what would it be mm-hmm. during these days? Um, what I would encourage, at least for us uh, in this part of the world here, um, really and truly, we can s- try to start off with quality because because it's with quality that eventually a person is able to improve the quantity of their deeds and really able to to perfect them. And you know, you know, as as people say that the more consistent you become in the the quality of these deeds, the more the hunger and the thirst is built within that individual to want to do more and more and increase more and more. So, I guess the standard method for all of us, really, inshallah, is that we can try is to start off with the quality, perfect mm-hmm. what you already have, what you're already doing, make sure that those things are are good, inshallah, and then you can really, really seriously start start thinking about doing extra deeds and, and something bigger, something you've never really imagined you can do. And ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make that easy for all of us. So it all starts off with just like starting a deed that we can um, put in our best effort and then going from there. Yeah, look, I'll share with you something really personal, okay? I usually don't do this, but because we're at the discussion, I'll say to you that last year what I did just for myself is in the last 10, uh, sorry, in these 10 days, I made a promise to myself yeah. that I was going to practice one sunnah act every single day that I've never ever practiced. I've never even heard it. So it required some study for me. So before these 10 days came, I went through these 10 particular sunnah acts and uh, I really, really tried to discipline myself to stick to them one every single day. So it was start. It started off with some of the most simplest things that it, that I take for granted, and a lot of people do as well. So, for example, always, always sitting down whilst eating or drinking something. Oh yeah. Now, yes. sometimes you know you might just get carelessly carried away. You just open a pop or something, and you just drink it right away while standing. Yeah. I made it such a discipline for myself, and I treated it as though it was like compulsory on myself. And before I knew it, after four or five days. It started to become a habit I couldn't let go. Wow. I couldn't stop it anymore. And I just thought to myself, subhanAllah, look how easy it was for me to do this. And literally my whole life, I was just being careless. If I felt like, you know, I wanted to do what I just did. But now it actually yeah. became habitual for me. Mm-hmm. Sure, that's such a unique thing to do because I never heard about like doing something like uh taking a sunnah every single day and especially with the blessings of those days I mean like you were saying how after three days you felt that it was become like it became part of your habit yeah I I felt lonely without it it was unbelievable and this really it taught me the whole psychology of the 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 sunnah and the tradition and the behavior of the prophet like you can actually train your mind and your heart and your life literally to follow these simple steps. And the thing that happened that was most profound for me is after the 10 days was over, yeah, I became so hungry for more. I just wanted to do more and more and more sunnah acts. I couldn't stop. It became literally addictive for me. Wow. So it was absolutely a life-changing sort of experience for me. It was a whole different perspective for me that I could have taken something so simple and built such a strong thirst for me that inshallah I'll try to carry for the rest of my life. So it sounds like what um, happened was like it um, those days helped you build a mindset of being very motivated to follow the sunnah through that yeah, simple exercise. And- Absolutely. And the crazy thing about it is that wasn't even really my intention. I just wanted to practice one sunnah every day. That was it. And I had no idea that it was going to literally change my whole perspective and my mindset about these simple little things. Wow, that's really it was just un- unbelievable. Yeah. So so like to our listeners who are wondering, um, what, what are some sunnah acts that a person can do or, you know, take up during those days? Well, the, the, there are several things that, inshallah, you can do that are that are specific to these days. But 
I mean, generally speaking, the things that we can do to really, really increase on these days is is really two things. It's the remembrance of Allah, so just a lot of adhkar, meaning all the sunnah du'as that we've learned. Mm-hmm. These sunnah du'as, you got to really make sure that you practice and you implement them. The, the du'a for getting dressed in the morning, looking in the mirror, going to the washroom, stepping out of the house, coming back home, going for a drive, all of these little things. Mm. They're, they're there for us not to just really make us mentally exhausted. It's actually training the mind to think Quran each and every single day of your life. And this yeah. is one of the biggest challenges for us Muslims is that we don't really know how to take Quran and make it the thought process and the, the ultimate decision maker for everything we do. So one thing that helps is that you try to take a sunnah dua and try to focus, master it, memorize it and make it become a habit. So that's one thing that you can do. And that's one thing that I've been doing in, you know, alhamdulillah for the last few years. And it's changed my life. The mm-hmm. second thing that you can really do for these 10 days is try to increase Quran. I'm not saying try to recite Quran, but whatever it is that you are doing, you want to increase from that. So if it's just a one surah, try to do a surah and a half, then two surahs, then one juz, and so on and so forth. And like I said earlier, you want to make sure that you discipline all the timings of the prayers. Make yeah. sure that they're on time, especially Salat al-Fajr. Um, and you also want to make sure, like as we talked about earlier, is to really um, do the charity acts as much as you can. And one thing that helps you do that is that you stick to the sunnah prayers. So yeah. you want to make sure that you're also performing the sunnah and the nafil prayers as well. So like um, with with re- reciting the Quran during the days of Dhul Hijjah and just generally, like um, what if someone was saying that uh, they, don't, they don't really recite it a lot because they don't understand it? How, how, how would they increase in their you know, benefit from it. Like, if that wonderful. Now, look, I'll tell you something that my sheikh told me when I was in Medina. Yeah. You know, I used to ask other sheikhs to make dua for me that Allah helps me re- recite Quran. And one of my closest, closest teachers, he said to me, you know what, Muslah, why are you asking me to make dua for you to read Quran? Just go pick up the Quran, <laughs> sit down and start reading it. Yeah. If I make dua, the Quran is not going to just literally be inspired and float into your hands and you're going to start reading it. Yeah. He says, just go and do it. And what interestingly enough, he actually he actually showed me that this is how Allah Azza wa Jal inspired the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He told him, read. He didn't say say okay you know make sure you get your mindset make sure you're focused make sure you have a clear day nothing's yeah. bothering you all the distractions that are out he didn't do none of those things he just said Iqra. Just, just go reading. and do it just go and read it yeah so for all the, those who are listening to this what i want to say to you is really one of the best advice i've ever gotten that helped me build a relationship in reciting quran and that that is literally, you know how important it is. We don't have to say that. You know the blessing behind it. We don't have to teach you this. It's just a matter of you literally putting aside a portion of your day and say, this is my Quran time for myself. And you go, you pick up the Quran, you sit there. The kids might be running around all over the place. Yeah. But just you're starting to train your mind and your heart that this Quran is only going to come to you if you literally discipline yourself to come to it, inshallah. That's the best advice that I can give to anybody. Whether they're struggling with it or whether they've mastered it and they want to increase from that, mm. just go and do it, inshallah. It's one of the blessings of how Allah makes it easy to come to Quran. Like the tips that you actually mentioned, like they're so simple, yet like, you know, we, we tend to like complicate things in life, like just the simplest things. Ever since I went to Medina and I became a student of knowledge, I realized, subhanAllah, This stuff is actually a lot easier than I ever imagined they could be. It just was a matter of me having the willpower to just go there and just do it. Just initiate something and Allah took care of the rest. Alhamdulillah. And I think many of us can relate to that. So, um, you know, we don't have too much time left until the interview ends. So I just want to um, actually um, change the question a bit and ask you a bit more about the day of Arafah and like what exactly is the significance behind that day? Um, Why is it that um, if you fast on that day, it's um, like, you know, there's a specified reward for it. Um, Is there anything else that makes that day special? Sure, absolutely. Um, As we mentioned earlier, there's an authentic hadith in 
the Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu says that fasting the day on that particular day will remove and expiate the sins of two years. The one year that's already um, passed, the previous one, and the coming year ahead as well. That in and of itself is a huge incentive to, to fast on this particular day. Imagine one day's equivalent to literally two years of fast, uh, two years of sin. It'll yeah. remove all of that, inshallah. Now, scholars have differed whether that includes major or minor, but the point is the hadith is general, so we accept it as such. Another blessing of the day is that this is the day that Allah completed the revelation of of the religion of Islam. He perfected his bounty that he bestowed upon each and every one of us, which is, of course, the blessing of Islam itself. And this was mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'idah, which is the fifth surah and the third verse. Another blessing is that it is on this day that Allah Azza wa Jal, he descends in a manner that suits him. We don't know how this happens, mm. but he comes down to the closest heaven and he shows his pride to the angels about the presence of the pilgrims on the, who are standing in the plains of Arafah. Uh, yet another blessing is that Allah Azza wa Jal promises to these pilgrims that he will bestow his mercy on them and he will forgive them. And he will also promise that they will return home free from all of their sins, just like the day they were born, subhanAllah. Mm. And for us, especially um, those of us who aren't able to make the hajj, we also can take part in the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, on this particular day, many people would be emancipated from the hellfire. So there were people who might have been destined to reach this nasib or this final ending yeah but because they acknowledged that day they took advantage of it they did the fasting and all the good deeds allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed that qadr and inshallah these people now become the people of jannah and remember we all know this the prophet sallam told us that dua one of its blessings is that it can change the qadr of allah by of course by his will so it's an absolutely profound day it is mm. such a unique oppor opportunity and we should look forward to it the same way that we look forward to Ramadan and any other blessed time of the year, inshallah. Definitely a unique opportunity. This wraps up our interview. And before we end off, I just want to um, ask you, for our listeners who haven't heard about you, um, where can they find you online? The first place is uh, um, they can check out my fan page on Facebook. Um, I have a fan page here that's updated daily. And if they have any questions and any comments or anything like that, that's the best place in inshallah that they can reach me and I check it daily and as for my videos usually I, I also run a YouTube channel where all of my videos are there and are updated daily inshallah so they can definitely continue um, to listen to those those are the two best places that they can reach me inshallah Muslim life hackers you're listening to this you can be able to find these links at our show notes which you can find on our website so thank you again Sheikh Muslim for joining us we really appreciate it and inshallah we have to speak to you again soon then Asalaamu As Alaikum no problem Take care. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. So that concludes our interview with Sheikh Musli Khan on the 10 days of Dual Hijjah. We hope, inshallah, you benefited from it. As mentioned in the interview, you can find all the links to Sheikh Musli's pages and resources in our show notes. We'll link them. You can find them at muslimlifehackers.com slash 36, and that's the number 36. So until next time, Muslim Life Hackers, aim high, take action, and be awesome.